Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, um, once more I want to thank you for your glory in my life and uh, for your mercy and for everything you already had done for me, even, even a lot of things that I don't know yet that you have done for us. And I just want to, you know, I humble myself. And uh, as this word is, is speaking to me, I want to ask you in the name of Jesus that you can use me. You can fill me with your will. And uh, I just want to say whatever it's in your heart, Jesus. And uh, still, I want to thank you for those that are watching online. They, you know, the ones are sick right now. In the name of Jesus, we know that by your stripes, we are healed. And we thank you for the healing for those that are sick right now. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, Jesus. So since the last time I was preaching here, and, uh, you know, I use an illustration about the Peter, and uh, I don't know if you guys, you know, those who watch The Chosen, you see, like, you know, in that actor who, you know, who, uh, you know, he makes The Chosen like in the Peter, you see all the time, you know, like how he's so close with Jesus. And even the Bible, if you see in the Bible, you're going to see like how Peter, how Peter is, he might be one of the first ones to be called by Jesus. He was the, you know, the, at least two or three ones, disciples close to Jesus. He saw like a lot of miracles and, you know, and everything. And uh, I want to ask you this for you. If you ever have, if you ever had an experience in your life that something you thought you lost it, and then that came back to you. I don't know if you have, you're experiencing this in your life, that uh, you thought you, you lost something, or, you know, someone, you I, I you know, or someone, or, or one thing, or someone that you think like, oh man, I, I thought it was gone. And uh, now I see, you know, it came back. So I don't know if you had this experience, but uh, imagine if you had something that you thought is gone. And then later, later on, you find, you'll find that. I think you're going to be so happy. You know, because, you know, I, I had that, this is experience in my life. Uh, you know, might be something not too deep, but, uh, you know, I have my work car, and uh, one day night, I have the keys. After I locked my car, I, got, I went to get pizza. And I, f I, you know, I heard a noise that something felt from my hands. And I said, oh, what is this? So I didn't realize what it was until the next day when I was coming to church. And then I saw, I said, where is my key? I lost my car key. And I was, you know, on a, on a uh, way you see a lot of leaves around. And I said, oh, my God, I can't see. I don't know. So I had an extra key. And I used the extra key. And the next day, actually, after when I came back to church, uh, when Barbara was here, that was the time. And that was, we all came back and looked in the, you know, we were saying, like, we're going to find the key. We're going to find this key. We're going to find it. But the day passed, and I never found the key. I was looking at Amazon to see how I can make, a, you know, a car key copy because I had one. And one day I went to do a oil change in my car. And the mechanic, you know, he said, you need to stay there. I'm going to do this stuff. So they was inside with my car. And then eventually he come to me, and then he came and said, hey, man, I have a gift for you. 
was just the the engine key, the one we turned the engine on. I have this for you as a gift. I said, I was like, oh my God, where did you find it? Oh, I think you, you know, you went to see something in your car, on a hooding, and I think you left there. I said, no. And then came to my mind all that story about my key. I was trying to find and I didn't. I say, Jesus, you are so good because, you know, if someone take that key and uh, open the car, he can take the car. But uh, what happened is, I think, I don't know, I didn't see. Could be an angel. But uh, God, God uses someone to take the key and put in a hood, you know, outside the car. So I think when the mechanic opened to do the oil change, he saw the key right there. I say, Jesus, I was, I was so surprised. <coughs> And uh, I, wa I was, you know, at the same time, I was, like, so happy because there was something that I, that I lost and I found. But uh, I don't think this happened with Peter. Because, you know, we know a little bit about the story of Peter. And it uh, seems like after he denied Jesus... He was so mad. He, you know, something happened with him. You, we're going to see, I'm going to tell you what I think this happened with him. But, uh, for example, the disciples on the way, when they go, was going to Emmaus way, after Jesus died, you know, um, they, they already said, like, man, it's gone. And then Jesus appeared to them and talked to them, and they didn't realize that was Jesus. Until they, you know, those two disciples say, oh, you stay overnight with us. Until, you know, Jesus stayed with them and broke the bread. And then they realized that was Jesus resurrected. That at the same time, they say, we need to go back to, to you know, to tell everyone. Because Jesus is alive. Everything he said, it's now happening. You know, everything he said, it's happening. It's happening. You know what happened? Sometimes we are expecting the things uh, uh, happen the way we want to. You know, they all thought that Jesus was coming to deliver them from Roma. And uh, that was, you know, Jesus is going far away, far beyond of that. Jesus wasn't just taking care of one city, of one state, of one country. He was taking care of everyone in this world. And that's why he came. You know, he came to, to the Jewish people. But, uh, you know, we know that they, you know, uh, they didn't accept him as the Messiah. But... Uh, uh, I have a, a scripture here that I mentioned in, in John, in chapter 21. I would like to use the, the book of John. In the chapter 1, chapter 21, verse 1, 3, they say this. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathanael from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. Verse 3 say, I'm going out to fish. Simon Peter told them. So Simon already saying, I, I don't want you to forget this. Simon at least saw Jesus so twice he was alive he was resurrected and then the other thing is strange thing is the disciples at least seven disciples the bible is going to mention if you continue reading at least seven disciples say we go with you we're going to follow you you know what we was having a living a nice life with jesus he said he's going to come but you know i don't know why they was following peter but one thing I know, Peter was like a leader, you know. Everybody liked to follow him. And uh, he went, and the Bible said, um, the Bible said that they went to the boat, and I feel like the resurrecting was that important for him. You think that when he saw Jesus after everything, he, 
he was like, oh my God, Jesus came back. And uh, do you think this sometimes happened with me and with you? Sometimes when you walk with Jesus all the time. So what is, what's going on here is Jesus, you know, Jesus, he went to the cross, he died, and uh, he, he came back to the Galilee. Jesus is coming to see that. Because Jesus knew that Peter and the disciple was, you know, fishing. And right now, I was like, how? How, Peter? You was the one who was closest, you know, beside, beside John. John was the one who called, like, I was the beloved one of Jesus. You know, he called, like, beloved of, the, beloved of Jesus. But uh, Peter was the one who was, like, so close. And I see one thing here. We're going to see this. We're going to know that I think Peter had in his mind what he did with Jesus. He denied Jesus. He, you know, he did something like, I can't do this. And, uh, you know, with me, I see some situations that even see many miracles in Jesus. Even see like some people, you know, telling the story about Jesus. But, uh, I don't know about you, but sometimes I never had something very special deep in me in Jesus. I saw Jesus making healing to the, to the people. I saw Jesus, you know, doing something to somebody else. But I look like to me, I never saw something so strong with me. But Peter saw it. If you see, you know, he was the one who said like, you, are, you know, uh, Jesus asked and said, who do you think, do, who do men think who I am? They think you are any prophet, Elijah or Jeremiah. But are you guys, you are so close to me. And Peter say, you are the Messiah. You are the living God. And he had a revelation from God. And Jesus spoke to him like, man, this, was, this did come from you. This came from the Father. He revealed this for you. So Peter has those experiences. But... Uh, Right now, what is happening is, Peter is not focusing in nothing that. He's only looking to what he did. He might think like, now Jesus came back. He appeared twice. Let's say twice. He appeared twice. He talked to everyone. But he never came to talk to me. I think he's still mad on me. And we sometimes, we have this situation with Jesus. We have this situation when someone does something bad with us. And I see in relationships, I see this happening with families when we want just to, you know, when, you know, something, do something bad with us. And we say like, let's leave this on the side. But I was never forgiveness. Never have that, that forgiveness that we were supposed to, like, let it go. And I see a little bit about on, on, the, you know, on, the, on the life of Peter. So the next, the next verse we're going to see how happened with Peter. And I have three things that I separate, and I think that's nice. That way... That was when Jesus tell, told him to Peter and said, I tell you, Peter, before the roast crown, crows, what's that? Crows. Before the roast crows today, you will deny three times that you know me. Okay? So Jesus already told him. And I see he in verse 54 of the chapter in Luke, Luke, in Luke chapter 22, verse 54. And that they said, say like this. The season, then seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. So there was two, uh, it was Peter and another disciple. So the, the priest knew the other guy. So the other guy went inside, and Peter stayed outside looking from, like, far away. And the way I see, when I use this as uh, when you see, 
When you look Jesus far away, I use the illustration, the fear. When you have a fear about something, the fear makes us to be far away from that thing we should go toward. If you have fear about something, you don't want to talk, you don't want to mention about that word never in your life. I don't know if this happened with you, but uh, with me sometimes does. And that this could be someone. Oh, have you heard about that? Don't touch to this name in this house. And this might be something hurt in your heart that to need to be healed. And I see the next one is the verse I use John 18, 18, and says... Okay, I'm going to use this. It was cold, and the servants and the officials stood around the fire they had made to keep warm. Peter also was standing with them, warming himself. Peter was cold. And I use this as the second thing happening in the life of Peter. So he was getting far from Jesus by fear, and then this coldness came to him and make his like callousness. So I don't know if you're going to see the first, he was getting far. And then he was like, I don't, he's not feeling. I, I don't know if I say the words callousness. callousness. It's like when you put the shoes on, it's so tight. You know, and they put the shoes so tight. In the first day, if you, let's say you got a boot, you go work, man, your foot's going to be hurting. You might be, you, your flesh is going to, you know, you're going to see that. But if you keep going on that way, eventually that's going to be okay. You're going to have like a very strong skin right there. It's like a dead skin. It's a callous, right? You don't feel it anymore. And sometimes we have this, you know, inside of us. We talk to people. And, uh, you know, I see this happening often and often. When they keep an unforgiving in their heart. When they keep something that needs to be done, need to be fixed. We need to go back. It's like a puzzle. We want to do or, or a Lego, a Lego. You know, you have the Lego. You need to, man, I was in a house this week, and they have, like, this Star Wars, you know, the, the big plane. I don't know how a couple thousand pieces is that. We never can try to do that with, look, the, the manual. You need to go, like, first step, put this. Second step. Imagine if you try by yourself, and eventually, looks okay, but eventually you're going to need to... to destroy everything, and go back to the beginning. And I see this in our life. When we stop to focus to the what can give us the way to live, and we focus to the bad situation. He hurt me. I hurt him. I can't forgive myself for what I did. But I'm telling you today, we have Jesus that he wants to heal you. He want to do a surgery in your heart, wherever it's hurting, because maybe you still have the scars, but under that scars, he wants to do like a surgery. He wants to, you know, taught him that. And he's the one who's going to heal that. And we see, we see the conclusion of the mistake when he goes to the, the chapter 18 of John, I think I lost my, so anyways. The chapter 18 of John, the verse 18, it said, It was cold, and the servant and the officials stood around the fire. They had made to keep warm. Peter also was standing with them, warming himself. You, you can go to the next one. Yeah, I think it's this that I want. Yeah. But one of the, the household slaves, 
That's why I'm using this John, the John 18. But when one of the household slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man who ear, whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, didn't you, didn't I see you out there in the olive grove with Jesus? And then Peter denied it. And immediately a rooster crowed. You know what I'm saying? This guy was there with, when I think he was there when Peter cut the ears off. And even knowing that, Peter denied. And the, the third time came. And then immediately a, roast, a rooster crowned, saying, that's the time. You saw what you did. You saw what you did. Before he wasn't okay. Before he wasn't feeling nothing. Before he, you know, before he was just going, doing what he thinks is okay. But, uh, you know, when the third time came and the rooster crowed, crowed, he realized that the mistake he was doing. And uh, you know how strange, you are? I'm not saying, I'm saying that's something happening with the number three here. If you go to the next verse, we're going to see this happen with Adam and Eve when the, the evil use three sentences to, you know, to, um, to make Eve, you know, look the other way, to deceive. That's the word I want to, to deceive Eve. Now the serpent was more craft than any any of the wild animal the Lord God had made, he said to the woman, okay, that's going to be the first time, did God really say, you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The next one. The second one, you will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman. The third one, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, opened, and your and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when this happening, I think the roost, the roost uh, crawled. The next verse is gonna say, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that. Uh, the tree was to be decided to make one wise. She took of it uh, of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and then they knew that they were naked. So you know, after the third time, he saw he was you know, and then he was like shaking. A wake up call! Come on, man! Look what you just did. Now you are naked. Now, you know, your, your mistakes, you know, made it. And then I can see, like, how the, the rooster uh, um, crowed. <laughs> so we have some three times happening in life. When, what the devil say, you know, what the Bible say about the devil? The Bible say he came to kill Steal and destroy. And why did Jesus say who he is? I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. What the angel says about, Je about Jesus, he is holy, holy, holy. He is the Father, he is the Son, he is the Holy Spirit. Jesus, it's telling me and you, doesn't matter what the devil is trying in your life. I am the way for you to come back, find the truth, and have eternal life. I say, oh, Jesus, thank you for this word. So the next word, the next verse, we're going to see the continuity of, uh, I just started in John 21. And we, you know, and that's, and they say, Simon Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, we also go with thee. Then uh, they went forth and, and entered into a ship immediately. 
and that night they caught nothing. That means for me, always when you have any trouble, any problem, or any situation, we need to solve that. Because, you know, for more you think it's okay, nothing's happening. But uh, Jesus have a meeting with him, and he didn't know. As Adam and Eve was trying hiding from God, and God was what? Hey, Adam and Eve, where are you? Adam, where are you? He's always looking for us. And I see when God is always looking for me and for you, even in our mistakes, because it's not because we are bad. Or, you know, we we born in a, in a sin in a shape of the iniquity because of Adam. He knows me and you. But we need to realize that we have Jesus now to forgive. We have Jesus now, the one who opens the door for us that was supposed to be closed. So, God is calling me? Okay, I'm here. The amazing when they answer it. You know why? Because they're not, not they, they have the leaves to try covering themselves. And now God is saying, no, I'm, I'm going to have, I'm gonna ha I have grace for you. I will not kill you. I'm going to cover you up. I'm going to kill an animal and I give you some clothes. So that happened same thing with, with Peter right here. So they was trying to hide away from Jesus. But Jesus said, I'm going I'm to find you. So they get nothing. We can, we can go to the next slide. So early in the morning, Jesus stood on, uh, on the shore. But the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Remember when the disciples going to the way of Emmaus? They didn't recognize Jesus. Same thing. So he called out them, friends, haven't you, uh, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. They don't know yet, right? He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to hold the net in because the large numbers of the fish. Look what's going to happen after that. I don't have the picture. You can go to the next one. Then the disciples, then the disciples who Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him said, it is the Lord. He wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off and jumping in the water. We had some, uh, before I had like, I thought that Peter was naked and they was embarrassed. That's why he jumped in the water. But let me think what he happened. I think in his mind, why he was in the boat, he was thinking everything he had a pass with Jesus. Because of the Holy Spirit, you know, for more that I tell you something, for more that you heard about uh, the Word of God, it's the Holy Spirit who give you, you know, uh, open your mind for you to understand. And I can see how Peter was on that boat, and even the moments before, you know, what I had with Jesus, what he changed with me. By the way, have you realized that when someone said to Peter, hey, what you was, you are the one that was with Jesus because you speak like him, you walk like him. You know, three years with Jesus changed the way he speaks, changed the way how he was walking. And that's amazing. I don't think he even realized it. Because at this time, the last thing he wanted to do is be like Jesus. Because he, want, he, do, he didn't want to be recognized. But it's too late. You became Jesus. You became like Jesus. Even when you try to run away, you don't have any place. The Bible says when you, where you can hide from Jesus. If you go to the deep of the waters, God is there. If you go wherever, wherever you try to be hiding from Jesus, there is no way 
There is no way you can be hiding because he is now looking for you. And now, G now Peter, it's like he he became like Jesus. And I think he is like he wasn't that bold, just thinking, you know, how many ways, you know, how was wonderful way I had with Jesus. How good moments we, you know, how miracle, how many miracles we saw with Jesus. And when when John said, "That's the master." That's Jesus. You know, he just took his garment and he jumped in the water and he went through. I gotta say, I, he even, he could use the illustration saying like, Jesus, it is you making me walk to you. But he didn't say that. He said, you know, I don't want to say anything. I just want to go and see him. So, and then the guys came after him. So, the, the next verse said uh, then Jesus disciples uh, then the disciples who Jesus loved said to Peter it is the Lord I think I already did that yeah it is repeated so go to the next one and then the chapter 21 verse 8 said the other disciples followed in the boat towing the net full of fish for they um, were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards. Uh, when they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. You know, remember when he was so cold and he was finding a strange fire to be to warming up? Now Jesus said, I have a fire. I want to warm you up. I want to feed you again. Because, you know, whatever the word is trying to feed you, that's not true. I have the living words that's going to make you have living waters. You're going to never be thirsty and, you know, and hungry again. And uh, the next one is going to say, the, the next slide is going to say in John 21, 14. This was now the third time. <laughs> you see? This is now the third time you see when the, the rooster crowned, crowned three times was a wake-up call. Now is the wake-up call for Peter. Now I'm going to shake you up and I'm going to wake you up and we're going to heal this, this thing you have inside of you. Um, this is the, now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the death. And uh, we're going to have a conversation. Before that Jesus appeared for the disciples, they didn't have time to talk. And now Jesus called Peter and said, after they eating, after they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than those? Yes, Lord, he said. You know me. You know that I love you, Jesus said. Feed my lambs. So I see, we, um, I heard about this time when Jesus asking him for three times about the love, that Jesus was asking him about the filial love, and that he was answered with agape love. I think I'm, I'm not one to use in this what Greek words God, you know, Jesus was using with Peter, but uh, one thing I said, I'm going to read the, the next one. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you tru truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord. You know that, you, that I love you, Jesus said. And now he said, take care of my sheep. And I see how Jesus is building the church in him. And the next verse says, the third time they wake up calling the third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because of Jesus asking him the third time, you love me. So, do you have another verse? No. Yeah, I, it's because I just have the, the part A of the verse. I fix it, but uh, we have a problem in the computer, and I, I don't have... The, the continuing but uh, yeah he said yes 
I love you, Jesus. And the Bible says he was sad. And I think this sadness came to him because he just remembered God bring, brought back to him when he denied three times. And now he say, more that you denied me three times, I love you. And I know that you love me. I want to show your love for me. And then, you know, he's going to continue and I'm going to build in you my church. So Jesus was built in Peter. He, you know, his love, the way how he can truly, you know, believe in Jesus. How can he can walk in Jesus. And I think by that time, he was healed by what Jesus was saying to him. And uh, when it came to me, is uh, how, you know, God always finishes what he starts. So, we always see when Peter walked on the water, when Jesus said to him, like, oh, you have a little faith, you know. But uh, one thing I, I was paying attention is this. Jesus tell him he, he wasn't, had a little faith, and Jesus take him back, and look what the next verse said. When they, who? Jesus and Peter climbed into the boat, the wind died out. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. He still was with Jesus, walking back to the boat. Jesus didn't let him stay there. What God, what Jesus started with him to make him walk, because I don't know if you think on this. Jesus, uh, Peter said, if it's you making me go to walk with you, Jesus cannot lie. He say, this is me. <laughs> so I say, okay, I go. You know, um, he, he, he wasn't about to say, no, that's not me. Oh, I don't want you to come. But he came and he walked back and he walked back to the boat again. And that's Jesus. Even when we trust in him and look to him, and sometimes we take our eyes from Jesus and look to the situation we are passing through and we are trying to hide from Jesus, I'm telling you, He's the one who takes you from deep in the waters and hold you tight and say, I'm holding you. I'm with you. Everything that I start in your life, I'm going to finish because I am your God. I know you before you were born. And that's why Jesus tell for me and for you. He knows us. And because this love, we are healed. And we need to thank you, Jesus, for that. I hope this message can, you know, speak to your life. And uh, if you have something, you know, to say to Jesus, sometimes you keep running out from Jesus. Or sometimes, you know, we have someone that we need to go back and talk to him uh, instead to escaping the situation. And we need to solve this. And Jesus is saying to you, I am with you. I want to heal your heart. And I just want to thank you, Jesus, for this time that we are having this opportunity to, to talk to the people about your word. You are the only one who can give the healing. You are the only one who can really heal. And I thank you for everything in the name of Jesus. Amen. Great, great message, thank God. <laughs> I can just feel Peter's discouragement after denying Jesus three times. I love when Jesus rose from the grave. <clears throat> he said to the women, go tell my disciples and Peter that I go before you to Galilee. Because he knew Je Peter wouldn't consider himself a follower because he denied him. But he said, tell my disciples and Peter the love, the forgiveness, the grace, the mercy of Jesus Christ. Thank God. So we are going to be starting a Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, it will be on the book of Exodus. Uh, I'm actually taking a college course on Exodus right now through Hillsdale College. 
Uh, also, we're studying Exodus in our Bible class for Kimberly knows seventh and eighth grade. Exodus, the Hebrews, the Jews consider Exodus the central point of the entire scriptures for them because Exodus is the story of redemption. When you look at Exodus, the whole thing points to redemption. Uh, so therefore, it points to Jesus Christ. So we welcome you to come out. Uh, we'll start at 7 on Wednesday nights. Uh, it'll be in English. <laughs> Friday nights is in Portuguese. They do their Bible study. We'll do our English. But if you really want to see, understand the book of Exodus, please come out and join us on every Wednesday night at 7. It's, we have men's group on Monday night. The men get together. The ladies group is on Tuesday nights. Wednesday night will be the Exodus study. Uh, Friday nights is the Portuguese service. So uh, please come and join us. We'll look deeply into the book of Exodus. Thank you.
Lord Jesus, we thank you for this time. We're going to take a communion. In the name of Jesus. This is your body. And this is your blood. We do this all the time in your memory. The memory that you gave your body for us. And I declare and I use this word right now. If you are sick, in the name of Jesus, by Jesus' stripes, we are healed. We have strength. You can take the bread. You can take the juice in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for this time we were here in your name. And we thank you for everything, Jesus. We thank you for those that are watching online, for those that are here in presence. You know any special need. You know every heart. And in the name of Jesus, we pray for each one right now. And we ask you can, you know, help them right now what they need right now in the name of jesus we thank you give us a blessed week in the name of jesus amen amen thank you Os que em ti se foram E os que hão de crer Cantando ao Cordeiro uma canção Teu nome é o mais alto Teu nome
next week we'll be this in English.